Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about how to use analytics in personal finance. In the subsequent videos I'll be talking more about it but this is the first video and I'm going to talk about the basics of uh, you know using analytics in personal finance. In the field of finance and investing people have been using analytics and data for a very long time. You know many banks and many you know mutual funds and hedge funds uh, have been using data and analytics for a very uh, long time you know one of the best example is how Renisa technology using data and analytics and uh, thereby getting over 20 to 30 percent of return over the last you know couple of decades you know that's uh, amazing right isn't it they're uh, primarily a quantitative hedge fund they're using uh, lots of data and they hire mathematicians uh, physicists computer scientists to build models decisions that they take for investment are primarily uh, guided through the models okay uh, but we can also use analytics and data in managing our own assets okay not everyone can uh, invest the money in renisa technology uh, obviously they have high fees and you know they have other uh, entry barrier and restrictions and so on and so forth uh, and they are only open to high net worth individuals by the way uh, so how can we also use data and analytics to increase our, uh, our return uh, on investment okay how can we do that well it's not that easy but it, it can certainly be done uh, and through some effort and through some understanding of uh, basic finance and basic analytics uh, we can uh, we can of course uh, do it so when we talk about personal finance you know we talk about the assets that we hold we normally hold cash, uh, gold, equity, mutual funds, uh, you know, real estate, fixed income, security, insurance, and pension. And each asset has its own level of risk. Some assets are more risky than the other. But then, you know, in the field of finance, uh, you must be familiar with uh, the fact that, you know, our return is also associated with risk. That means higher is the risk, higher return you should be expecting. And wherever you see higher return, there is also higher risk, right? This is also known as the risk return trade off. So it's important that we understand the risk and the return level of each of these assets. And how we can understand that is through uh, reading different, you know, books and, uh, and, and articles about this, you know, assets. But not everything is actually, um, is actually written down uh, uh, on paper or on, on different blocks. We need to understand a lot of these things from the perspective of our risk level, how much risk we can take. Therefore, it's important to have this personal analytics or personalized analytics. Okay, so uh, basics of finance. I'll start with basics of finance. Okay, um, risk return trade off. I've already talked about it. The risk and return, uh, they're. Uh, there is a trade-off. If you want uh, more return, you have to take more risk. Okay. Uh, Hundred dollar does not lie on the road for a long time. This is the first principle in economics and finance. Uh, if somebody is promising you a very high return with, uh, uh, you know, very low risk, then he's uh, basically lying. You know. So there is no free money. There is no free lunch. Um, so the higher return is always associated with uh, higher risk. Okay. A dollar today is not same as dollar tomorrow. Uh, in finance, is is known as the time value of money. That means uh, with time, your cash uh, or the dollar uh, loses its value. Okay, a financial world is globally uh, globalized like never before. Uh, it's true. I'm sure you know this. Newspapers or, or reading financial uh, news. Uh, assets are correlated. Uh, not many people know this, but assets are collect index return. Uh, Top performing equities, top performing mutual funds, like you know, whatever data available uh, publicly, you should be able to you know collect that. So that's that's good. Um, you can also buy property data. Okay, there are also companies, uh, uh, credible companies, which are selling property data. You can also uh, buy, but um, like when you start, it's important to start with the simple data. Later on, you can always add more data to it. Uh, you uh, collect macroeconomic data uh, for the country that you are living living in, but also some global indicator like global GDP, uh, okay, or GDP growth of uh, you know for for a given continent, for example, uh, North America, Europe, um, Asia, and so on. 
post not spending and saving data if you have that data for a long time it is always good to properly uh, you know create a data set for that that always uh, is helpful so what kind of data analytics that you can do okay there are two types uh, basic analytics and then somewhat more advanced analytics okay the basic analytics would be simply you know uh, summarizing the data okay as much as possible through segments and so on uh, you can compute the mid median mode uh, you know you can have box plots different visualization of uh, your data so uh, yeah so you basically explore the data as much as possible using tools and using statistical uh, you know techniques so the summary statistics is very important um, you can also use uh, train graphs okay so train graphs are basically the time series plots right and uh, investment is more about how a particular asset has done over a period of time right so it's always good to uh, collect um, as much data as possible and and as uh, old as possible that means if you can collect 10 years of data or 20 years of data it is always good um, so you know plot the trend and see how the return is um, you can also build uh, uh, regression models okay to understand important relationship okay uh, as you might know that regression models are models where you have a dependent and set of independent variables and see how your return is dependent on other variables okay return on other uh, asset or other macroeconomic uh, variables and so on okay you can also build prediction models right simply you know use as much data as possible just to predict uh, uh, return or predict uh, you know whatever event of interest you want to know in future okay but ensure that you know uh, ensure that you you test your models properly before you use that's important you can also find lots of uh, pattern and um, or you can also uh, do anomaly detections just to see the important pattern in the uh, in the financial uh, data that you have with you and that you can use uh, for better decision making so these are some of the simple analytics little more advanced would be you know using portfolio optimization techniques such as the uh, linear programming and the nonlinear programming um, you can use sentiment analysis, uh, yeah, natural language processing, and this this stuff. These are more advanced. Um, you can start with the basics, and then when you're comfortable with the basic techniques, then uh, move to the more advanced ones. All right. What are the tools and languages that you can use? Uh, Excel is a very popular tool for personal finance. Many people use it. Uh, but Excel has its own limitation is to ML machine learning library also in uh, Excel except maybe regression you cannot do much with Excel but with Python R SAS or SPSS or even general purpose programming languages such as Java C++ JavaScript offer you a lot more uh, flexibility or a lot more packages uh, built-in packages where you simply you know import them and use uh, for your own uh, purpose okay so these are some of the tools uh, you can use some of the best practices well gather as much data as possible the more data you uh, gather the better models you can build and uh, the better decisions you can then take collect uh, data from reliable sources uh, do not collect data just from everywhere ensure that you know you collect data from reliable sources like yahoo finance or google uh, finance um, Wandel is one good source. Uh, in your respective country, you must be having your own, you know, uh, stock market data. Uh, like in India, you have the uh, NSE and BSE data on the website. You can get macroeconomic data from the central bank website. You can get data from IMFs or World Bank's website. So these are reliable sources. So ensure that you get data from reliable sources. Clean your data properly. Okay, that's important. That if you don't do that, then it's prone to error. Uh, start from simple techniques so don't simply you know start building machine learning models uh, you know the first thing should be simply collect your data and you know uh, do uh, the basic exploratory data analysis like summarize your data just mean median mode you know plot some uh, uh, data you know basic scatter plot line plot things like that or box plot um, and test your code techniques before you use um, 
So ensure that it's properly tested. There shouldn't be any error. Uh, whether it's uh, you know data selection, whether it is building a model, it should be free of error. So you should uh, you know uh, test it properly, right? Automate as much as possible, um, so that you know once you have built, once you have put in a lot of effort, you can uh, reuse your code and tools and techniques later for other uh, purposes. You can also share this with your friends and family members. You know that will also be great. So auto automate as much as possible. One other thing is uh, also monitor it properly, right? So every month or every quarter, you just see how your um, models uh, or uh, your techniques that that you know you use for yourself are doing, okay? Um, and then you can monitor it, backtest it, so that you know you can uh, modify your uh, algorithms or models properly, right? Um, so you know, so do that. So these are some of the best practices you can use in uh, some of the other videos uh, in subsequent videos.